There Happy is. Thursday. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's got his oh, I, had to, I had to get myself totally loaded here with a double scoop. And now I am caffeinated, garroted, <laughs> and I'm ready to have power. I happen to hear that um that Zoom and very humble. He fits in with the family. And I am just. I knew nothing of him, and I'm just totally praying and rooting for him, and I'm excited to give him a hug. Yeah. He's a real deal. Yeah. Alec, yeah. Oh, everyone, cheers. 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 Exactly. Here you go. I can't see you, but here. <laughs> I thought great. the funniest thing today, uh, Adriel, was um, when you were just describing him as a kid, because he mm -hmm. looked like a kid. Mm -hmm. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fun. Well, it's so I've got like this. I've got this big Deshaun in my house right now. Got um, <laughs> and just chilling with me. Uh, I got a new roommate. But it's funny. Did his arm get fixed? <laughs> I fixed it. I'm telling you, I made a lot of projects. <laughs> I did. I fixed his arm. Um, <laughs> it got broken. <laughs> It, I fixed it. He can still play football. Um, but like seeing this version of him, he looks, you know, he's like a professional football guy. And then seeing him today when he was talking, so I don't know, it's just like, it's just this guy that like, you know, is, has a story. And it was, it was really cool to, to see him on that side. I know that they've been wanting to showcase him a lot more like that across a lot of their different avenues because you know, a lot of people, they, the reason he's got endorsements, right, is because he's a football player, but he's so much more than a football player. You know, I think... No lie, I thought his dog would be bigger. <laughs> oh, no, we heard that yelp, and we were, like, talking, we are like, do you think he has a big dog or small dog? And we were like, that's a small dog sound. <laughs> that's a pint-sized dog. <laughs> but, you know, I think the common denominator, honestly, and I've, I've, I've trained so many athletes, is the athletes that soar are the athletes that are grounded. The athletes that are the most successful are the athletes that have soul strength. And they all have stories, but when they become too full of themselves, um, then they go into the weeds. And when someone truly is grounded and their metrics is Christ or their metrics is family, it just resonates in everything they do. And those are the people that you want to root for. Those are the people yeah. that truly are aware because, you know, what was the first thing he did when he became successful is he loved on his mother. You know, it's just, it's a beautiful story. It, it really, really is. Well, we're going to start today. And, um, you know, for people that are tuning in, that are listening here every Thursday, normally at two o'clock central time, Three o'clock um, Eastern time, we have our Zervita chat, and it gives us an opportunity to truly love on each and every one of you. But most importantly, we found out that we created this Zervita pledge. And if you are a first time uh, viewer, we want you to go to Zervita.com front slash pledge and submit your information. And really what it is, it's a it's a declaration of you making a commitment to yourself and to your creator. And when you do so, it's truly different. It's not a competition. And it really comes to really one of our first founding principles where it's so very important to make that commitment to yourself and to God. And when we were having our 90 day challenges over the last decade, a lot of people felt intimidated. A lot of people felt as though that they were scared because they were competing against different people. But with this pledge, this Servita pledge, you can win at whatever level you're on, whether you're looking to break a stronghold, lose weight, uh, reconcile on a relationship, make more money, be that best version of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. That's what we do. So go to Zervita.com front slash pledge. You'll then get an email and the email is going to introduce you, congratulate you, and you'll be part of an exclusive group on our Facebook. And it'll be our Zervita pledge. Mondays, we have motivational Mondays, Tuesdays, we have 
Fitness Tuesdays, we have recipes, macronutrient meal plans. Then every Thursday we come here and we have special guests. And without further ado, you know, I uh, partnered with Zervita uh, going back in 2012. And never in a million years would I, would I know that it changed the course of my life. My life was pretty amazing, but you know, when God gets in the midst of something, he takes it to the next stratosphere. And when I came into Houston, I had the wonderful opportunity to meet Mark and Tracy Jarvis. And I met um, Jay Schaefer, Susie, uh, Shelley, uh, and Kirby Wright was the VP of marketing. And all I know is for two days, we were talking and I was listening to their mission statement, to their vision, to, to truly what they wanted to do. And when I got on the plane coming back to go to Detroit, I was with, actually, I didn't bring my attorney. I brought my spiritual dad, who's been a pastor for 55 years, Pastor Paul Bercy. And he says, so what do you think? And I got emotional and I said, I feel like God's calling me to come to help Zervita grow. And all I know is that um, the first guest, guests, um, Jay and Susie Schaefer, they are the salt of the earth. And they're the reason with Mark and Tracy why I basically am with Zervita. And um, it's changed the course of my, my, my life by increasing the platform of ministry. Whether a person is working at a supermarket or a person is on television, whether a person's a football player or a person is cleaning a laundromat, everyone has a ministry. And I've never felt more at home and know without a question or a doubt on why I'm here at Zervita. So I want to introduce um, Susie and Jay Schaefer, thank you for taking the time today um, for being on this Zervita chat. And I guess the first question is, you know, why is it so important for people to know what Zervita's founding principles are? I mean, there's so many different companies that people could get involved in. There's so many different wellness companies. But I know personally why Zervita is different, but here you are, you know, the co-founders. What was your dream when putting Zervita together, which is actually God's company? Susie? <laughs> well, you defer to your wife first. So. She's going to kick me under the table. <laughs> I think our founding principles um, set us apart and that's what we want is to be set apart. I think God sets people apart for a purpose and a mission and that's what we wanted to be as a company with purpose and mission, not just a company to, um, to gain wealth, although that's nothing wrong with that, but we want to be more than that, to be a company that it actually did have a mission to give back what God has so graciously given us. So that's why to me, it's very important. Yeah, you know, um, Peter, it's funny you described that meeting. I, that will go down in history as the longest yeah. meeting yeah. ever in Zervita. Two days. Two days and we didn't have an agenda. <laughs> we just sat around and talked. Uh, and obviously we knew God was doing something. Uh, the pastor that uh, Peter's talking about, Pastor Paul, just felt like he walked right out of the Bible. You know, yeah. you know, I still think about him all the time, but it was, and it, it, it goes back to the reason Zervita is around. When Mark and Tracy first got the birthing in their spirit and their heart about Zervita, and then we met, and uh, just from the beginning, you knew it was more than a company. It was had a calling and a purpose on it. Uh, we, we've all had prophetic, um, uh, things said over it's kind of funny in the very beginning I, I, I really don't like to tell the story because it shows you where my faith was uh, our pastor came up and said hey you're going to be part of um, something that you like Joseph you're going to be part of something that's provision it's going to provide and you're going to provide for thousands and thousands of people and it's going to be a birth of God and it's going to be this thing and so the first thing I think is okay great I'm going to jail for two years <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, anyway, uh, it is what it is. Thank God it was nothing like that. But uh, yeah, you can't deny that God has his hand 
on the company, particularly when you talk about this pledge, is just now finding its way. Uh, we've talked about this since that meeting. Yep. And it's just now feeling like it's gelling into much, much more than a weight loss or a get better healthy. It's about being a community and part of something. And when you're part of that and you feel like you belong, you want to do better. And so, yeah, it's a, just an awesome experience. You know, and, and here, and if you could explain to the people that I see more people joining us, it's like, you know, here our lives have been changed forever. Um, March 2020 will go down in history. It'll be in the history books 100 years from now. And, um, you know, on, on our Motivational Monday on um, Zervita Pledge, um, I, I felt led that I feel like that God was trying to adjust our moral compass and, and trying to get us to refocus and to reboot and, and to reprioritize what's really, really important. And I know so many people, and it breaks my heart, that are losing jobs, um, getting divorced. Because we have a choice when we get in front of the fire that we can either go further and run to our faith, or we could run away from our faith and go back to our old ways. Um, which for many people, you know, I mean, when you think about this isolation, isolation creates darkness. Darkness is like a recipe it's like rocket fuel for addiction. So here we are, this company that we love on people. In March, we were going up while the world was crashing down. And I want you to explain in your own words on like, you know, here we're all working from home. I feel like I'm shooting my TV show every day because we're doing we're doing like in-home fitness routines, and we got people that are really, we're sweating together, we're coming together. So we're creating unity instead of isolation, and we're creating light instead of darkness. And I feel like it's almost a perfect storm um, on, on people coming together. And, and really, really kind of, I always say that a lot of times, you know, we get so busy doing our different things that our busyness buries God's greatness. And now he's got our full attention and we really have no choice. So why is Zervita kind of having a really good last month? And it seems like the walls are closing in on the whole universe right now. And why is this a good time for people to take our Zervita pledge? Well, uh, look, you said it, the, the, when the world is dark, we need to be the light. And, and God is giving us, you know, you, you can't say we sat around and strategized and thought about all this. It just happened, as you well know. And so for Zervita to be this light, and when you, when you put God first and you put people first, um, things happen. And so uh, the world is dark, darker and us or don't have a relationship with God or don't have each other, man, they are freaking out. Right. Um, and, and, and when you talk about keeping closure for another 30 days, uh, you're taking away their hope. So what a better time. People are open. They're asking questions right now. At, at, we've never seen it like this. Think about how fast this happened overnight. Like that. Like that. So when you speak to people about the pledge, you speak to people about God's purpose on this company, they're open, their ears are open and they're ready and trusting. You speak the word and speak the life into them, it's gonna drip down in there and come and, and birth itself and, and come to life. So people are missing their friends, they're missing camaraderie. For the first time, they're questioning what they're doing with their life and we have the answers. We have community, we have a purpose, we have great products. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's all about introducing them to God. Uh, you know, and it, when you think about it, it's like it's never more of a time to me that hype, we're hypersensitive on literally being the product of the product, being the walking billboard, even if it's outside fitness and nutrition. Show me a person under pressure, not in a great environment, and I'll show you their character or lack of it. Show me a person that's in the middle of the fire and how they handle it. I'll show you and tell you a lot about that person's integrity. 
you know, so here we are in the middle of this perfect storm and it is, it's important. It starts and it ends with you because it's not about me. It's about we. So here we are, you know, we are in an amazing company with some of the best products on the planet. And the crazy thing is, is like you said, we couldn't write this script that our flagship product, you know, literally strengthens the autoimmune system because of the anti-inflammatory properties, gives you, studies have proven it, clarity, focus, you know, and energy. And now all of a sudden people are feeling good from the inside out and we have their attention and more and more people are joining the pledge. For people that are on the fence, you know, for people that maybe have been on the sidelines, they haven't gotten the game, they may have bought the product and it's in their cupboard and maybe they, you know, they, they stay involved in Zervita, but they really have never, never engaged in it. You know, they've never really kind of, they got three memberships in their purse or in their wallet. And they're, they're just like, now, what would you tell those people that are kind of always, I call them balcony people. They're always rooting for other people, but they're never putting the focus on, on themselves because they've lost hope. Who would you tell them? Maybe the shot. Um, well, to me, hope is found in the Lord, plain and simple. So my first response would be to direct them that way and then to have them join the community. I mean, we have talked to more people that have never even been on Zooms and to connect <laughs> through Zoom, you actually get to see faces, you get to you get to see the expressions, which is what people are desperately longing for when they are alone. It's, um, so I think it'd be an incredible time to, to refocus everyone on this. This is not a surprise to God. Correct. He knew this was coming. He, he's always been there for us. What a time now to reach out to our neighbors, to reach out to those who are alone who maybe have that product in their room and get them on board with some of the things that we have daily. We're talking to people. I don't feel so alone. I talk to Adriel when I talk to her, I'm face to face with her. When I talk to you, we're face to face. Yep. I love seeing that. I love seeing the faces. Of course, you know, it, it creates intimacy into me. You yeah. see, and, and it's so easy to stand behind, you know, a phone or to, text or to email you know and even when i'm doing television i'm in front of this box i could do 40 takes get the most perfect take and then it goes to the network when you're on a zoom i did a zoom the other day and i just felt literally the holy spirit come upon me and i i was losing it emotionally because this isn't like a dress rehearsal we're really in this mm -hmm. and we do need each other you know um, Jay, could you, could you explain to people, here we have, God willing, you know, a convention in Chicago. It's only like four hours away from my home. It's one of my favorite cities because it reminds me I'm born and raised in, in New York City. And it's just a smaller, more intimate, cleaner, younger city. Um, can you maybe explain why people should come to or get involved into a, a convention. And then also a lot of people have questioned me and said, you have a service? Like you, you actually have a service on Sunday? I says, yeah, we give people an opportunity because we're really kind of a ministry that happens to be a business. <laughs> so can you explain that? Yeah, but first let me just say one thing, okay? Susie was very nice a minute ago, all right? Yeah. For those people who are sitting on the balcony watching, what she really would do was pick them up and kick them off the balcony and say, get involved. <laughs> you know that's right, right? I know, that's right. <laughs> She'd be very nice. And that's all great, God knows. She would kick them off and get them in the, in the crowd. She's the only one in my entire career that has gotten behind like professional pictures at conventions and actually just like did one of these jobs behind me. She'd just run in front of the camera. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I love her. And that is that you do have to grab the people off the balcony and bring them in because they're just a little afraid. And sometimes you push them off because once they get in there, it's like, oh, wow, I didn't know it was like this. And convention's kind of that same way. It's, it's this unbelievable experience that you've got to be part of. You just have to be part of it. You've got to bring people to it because it's one of those things that if you haven't been, you really can't explain. It, think about things in your life that you've gone to and you try to, and it's been such an incredible experience. You try to explain it to somebody and, and you just see the dull look in their eyes. You've got to grab them and bring them. I mean, it's worth every penny you spend, grab them and bring them there because convention uh, is, is the, these kind of calls on steroids. I mean, it's just right. unbelievable what happens at conventions. And um, so service kind of is the most important part of, uh, of the convention. What, you talking to Peter? <laughs> You're going to ask him a question. <laughs> oh, I just go to him sign language. <laughs> no, the service is unbelievable because uh, that is what it's all about. Um, uh, really, uh, the, the other stuff is great. You learn it, but that's kind of the icing on the cake and what the, what the real purpose uh, is to introduce people to Christ. You know, and, and I think I agree with you. And I, I think that, like, when you think about it, when you, when you go to a convention and there's so many people that, that, um, I call it your your spirit. Some people call it your intuition. They call it your gut. And so many people, they don't even know why they're there. They're like saying, well, my friend told me to come here. They said that I'm stuck. I need to get unstuck. That I'm going through this bad relationship. That um, I'm going from paycheck to paycheck or whatever the case is. And I, it's the stories. It's the testimonies. It's to see these people literally pour and open their hearts on stage where you say, finally, when you're sitting there, you get this yaha moment and you say, wow, that's me. If that person could do it, I can do it. And we truly are in the hope business because when people leave, they have this sense of hope. If you don't have hope, you're dead on arrival. You just don't know it. And it's like... When I experience, you know, the conventions now for nine years, it's like when I get on the plane and I'm empty, I'm spent, there's this peace like no other. And I said it to you when I came back, I was driving from Ohio recently and I, I, I you and I were talking on the phone and we were texting and um, I just said, I said, I'm kind of just exhausted emotionally but I knew that I was supposed to be there. And I knew that, like, I knew that what God called me to do was done. And I didn't care. I was tired because I was going home for him to fill my cup up again. And that's when we leave. I know when everybody in corporate leaves convention and all the people that are involved, but that's the most beautiful thing because we're paying it forward because the people, and I love when a lot of our humble leaders will say, I'm talking to you in the back row. I'm talking to you. You know, you're going to be on stage one day. You're going to be telling your story because everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. And, you know, my hope and my prayer that people that are listening not only become part of this Zervita pledge, but engaged um, and, and be that best version of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. We give you all the tools and the support that you'll ever need. We truly love you. We want you to succeed. You know, and one of the last questions is for you, Susie. It's like, and I'm not going to get emotional saying this, but this is near and dear to my heart. It's like behind every, behind every good man is a great woman. And I believe with all my heart that there comes a time in history where God puts people in certain positions and they just light up and they take ownership of that. And I have seen both of you as friends and as partners evolve, but I've never seen two people, you've always been together, but I've never seen two people um, mesh so well where it's like one in one equals a million. And how does it feel and how did you know that you were called for this moment in history to, you know, to be the, the first lady 
so to speak, to the CEO of God's company of Zervita. And, and what does that mean to you and how do you help your husband? Oh my. <laughs> Good, thank you, great question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think for one, I've never really looked at myself as that. I've looked at myself as, a, as really a wife, a mother, a friend, um, a daughter, a sister, that type of thing. I've never thought about what you just said. I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on me, jeez. <laughs> But Jay has always been um, such a guy full of so much integrity that it's easy to be with him. It's easy to, um, to walk by his side. And it makes me a better person because of who he is, because of the way he directs me and our family, our girls. Um, for such a time as this, I mean, I I haven't ever been as excited to know that um, that Jay's integrity, honesty is is really what God has always wanted to run the company. Not not that it wasn't run that way. I don't mean it that way. But um, and then for Zervita Giving to to go where we want to go, you know, just to give back what God has given us. And explain a little for people that are listening that don't know about Zervita giving, because it's a beautiful story and also lead them where they could see your video and stuff. But explain that because many people don't know about Zervita giving. Well, Zervita giving is something that we, uh, we all talked about. We all wanted to do to give back what God is so blessed Zervita and us with. And um, one of the first projects we wanna do, of course we're doing the Feed 500 and we wanna continue down that road of Feed 500. Adriel has, has just done an amazing job building that and loving on people the way she does. And that's definitely something we wanna continue. But we also wanna grow in giving back. And uh, our next project of course is building a house for Habitat for Humanities. And um, that is something I am over the moon excited about because you're actually putting a house. I mean, like Deshaun was saying, it changed the trajectory of his life. And could you imagine being able to do that through Zervita, have our own Zervita home that we have, we have helped a family change their life completely and generations to come. And of course, we, we want to do more and more projects. As we grow and build, we'll just, we'll grow together. And Peter, you've been excellent too with wanting to come on board and help with that because your vision was also to build a home. So um, I think- Where can it's people go? Where can people go to learn more about it and to also give if they wanted to? Well, to the Zervita website, you- Go straight down to Zervita Giving, and there's a button there. You can press Donate, and can donate great, like that. Great. And, and Jay, I'll leave this with you. You know, for your take-home message, you know, here we're in the midst of the storm. People have an opportunity to come together with our Zervita pledge. And um, what would be the take-home message on where we are you know, as a country, where we are as a company and, and where we're going? Well, I think it's been very clear. There's been a very clear path before us, and that is to give away what we have. Um, we have answers. We have products. Most importantly, we have community and a belief. And, and it's, it's, it's been amplified in a lot of people's hearts that we have so much and we need to step out and give because we have to be realistic about this. Look, if this thing ends tomorrow, people will tend to go back to their normal routines and you know, just oh, forget about the pandemic. Now, uh, you know, there's, in some ways our lives will forever be changed. And so I'm hoping that on our side, what's forever changed is the resolve to introduce people to what we have. Uh, and that is our belief system, our community, uh, because I can guarantee you one of the things people are asking themselves now is, 
I never want to be alone again. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to be part of a community. And if you can be part of a community like the pledge where you're part of something, you're all in it together, you're driving towards a common goal. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. We all can think back in times of our lives when we've been part of a, a friend group or a sports team or, or, or anything, a family gathering, and you remember the fondness in your heart towards one another. And uh, that's what we're having now. We just can't forget that. We got to go forward because we, we really need to be a light to the nation. And I think we will, and we are being that uh, right now. We just have to make sure we almost amplify it. So, you know, again, I believe we have to answer some real answers uh, to a lot of questions people are asking. We just have to be ready to give them. You know, and, and what I'll leave with is, is, as you just said, we will never be the same and we do have a choice. We, could, we can choose to be better or worse and I choose, I know that you both do, and Zervita does to choose to be better. And my hope and my prayer is that it softens everyone's heart and brings you closer to the most important thing. And, and that is not necessarily what's here, but our eternal life. And um, I just want to, I just want to leave with, um, you know, may God continue to guide you and, and just protect you and persevere you through all these little hills and valleries. And I'm just blessed to be a, a small part of this amazing uh, mission that we've been called to do. So thank you both for uh, taking the time out of your day. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Uh, thank you for loving on each and every one of us. And um, hopefully I'll see the both of you soon. Yes. Well, Peter, thank you. Thank you, Adriel. You guys have done an incredible job. You, you've turned this thing into a purpose and a mission, something that's just kind of been sitting over there. It, it, your, your dream is now coming through. Yes. Uh, it, it's a great a testament to persevering, hanging in there, sticking with it. And, and I believe we've yet to see what this really will become. I mean, exactly. We're just in the end stages, so I, very, very excited about what's going on. I agree. Adriel, I'm going to hand it back to you, sweetheart. So I'm, it was so weird. I was talking to one of my best friends last night. If you don't have the house party app, you should probably get it. It's really fun. Um, you can play games and stuff on it. So it's like you can play cards against humanity or draw. And like, it's almost like FaceTime with games. So 10 out of 10 recommend. Um, but we were talking, she's in Massachusetts. So they've been locked down a little bit longer than us. And I had also talked to Jay about this maybe like a day before. And this is like, well, you, I mean, you guys, you were here. You saw me have a complete mental breakdown two weeks ago on this call, crying. And um, I think sometimes we need to do that. We need to be honest about where we're at so that we can um, really like evaluate what we're going through and be able to move forward, right? So that's what we did last year when this whole pledge thing started. We, the reason it was successful and the reason we've been able to build this community like that is on honesty and it's on trust because you're not going to have the best days every day. It doesn't matter if you're in isolation during a pandemic or it's like, you know, 2016 and everything's rosy. Like it, it doesn't matter. Every day is not going to be great and every day is not going to be bad either. And you have to be able to really be honest with yourself about where you're at emotionally, spiritually, physically to be able to really move forward and conquer the things that you want to do you can't grow if you're if you're faking it right like you have to be honest with yourself you have to be honest with your friends and i love that we have this accountability team here where where you guys love me enough to let me come and cry and be like i'm not okay today and then like encourage me through text messages and messages on facebook and instagram to really like I was able to skew my vision back to where it was supposed to be. And, and now like, I can't imagine, like I know this whole thing is weird, but this year has been so good for me personally. It's weird to think about it like this. I'm killing this year. I don't care if I'm in isolation. I am working out more <laughs> in isolation than I, ha I was before. You know, I'm filming like workouts for our TikTok. I'm getting to hang out with my friends more than I was because you would go to work and then you'd be like, go home. You're like, I don't want to do anything, but instead we just miss people. So we're like all on zooms or we're on FaceTime together. We're playing games and we are reconnecting. Like I talk to my family more now than I have in months. 
and we have like big group chats going on and we're reaching out and encouraging each other. I think that, I think it's, I mean, it's biblical, right? Like not everything's going to be great, but with God, everything can work towards good if you allow him to. And that's what we need to focus on, right? Like not every situation in this whole, whole thing is bad. Like I don't have to go grocery shopping. They just bring me my groceries. Like, that's pretty cool. I don't know. Like, there's like little positives you can look at like that. You know, I get to hang out with my dog way more than she probably really thought she wanted to hang out with me until I was here all the time. I get to see people more. I get to work out more. I'm still training for a half marathon that's probably not going to happen next month, but I'm going to run it regardless of getting a medal. It's about committing to yourself and committing to the people you love to be that person that they can come to and rely on as well. I want to be an inspiration for you because you guys inspire me. You know, Haley's out there killing it. She's just like doing all this stuff all the time. I am, yeah, I'm putting you on blast. <laughs> but, you know, all of you are in there and you're participating and you're working out and you're eating healthy and you're not letting this be an excuse to like, to just give up because this is the time to barrel down and to really dig in and show yourself what you're made of because we are all made of stronger stuff than we give ourselves credit for. And we need each other to remind each other of that sometimes. We need to be the mirrors for each other during the hard times to be like, nah, sis, you can push through this. You know, Holly's text messages to me every week being like, I love you, you inspire me. That get sometimes it's like, the, how did she know I needed that message at that moment? reach out to people. This is the time, right? This isn't about trying to sell them a product. It's about trying to sell them love and family and community because this is the time that we need it the most. And that's what this company is. Our product is fabulous, but our people are better. And that's what we need to be doing for each other right now. We need to be the support system to show people it's not about beating people over the head with a Bible, right? It's about showing them Christ's love in any circumstance. And this is a phenomenal circumstance to really showcase who we are as Christians and who we are as God's children and to help people like put their crowns back up a little bit more when they're down and to just show people who they are and love on them even harder right now. And I'm just, I'm very grateful for all of you because, you know, you pull me up when I'm not having the best days and I hope that, that I can return that favor for you guys. And I just, I, I love all of you. And I was telling someone the other day, um, Adrian was posting something and I was like, she's doing so good. I'm just so proud of her. I was like, I feel like they're all my children. Like, I'm just like, I want to encourage everyone. I'm like, lift everybody up and like tell you how amazing you are. And I, I don't always have the time to do it. And I apologize for that, but we see you. We see how hard you're working and you inspire us to keep going too. So don't think this is like some one-sided thing. You guys are amazing. I know Vina's, Vina's texting me like how much she's working out and how much she wasn't doing that before. So I think that sometimes we just, we have to fall into the circumstance we're in and find the ways to make it positive because there's always a way to make something positive. It's just sometimes we get lost in the guck, you know? And there's, there's my TED talk. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, it's, I mean, we do get better together and it's about how we live it. It's not how we talk it. And during these times is, is really where someone's character or their integrity comes through. Because like I said before, it's easy to get on stage or it's easy to be pre-scripted but when you're in the midst of the fire, um, that's really who and what your fiber is made of. And that's where I have to go to someone way higher and stronger than me, or I would be in that corner in, you know, in a fetus position. And, and that's why it's so important, you know, my children even, and, and whether it's our followers or our people or our friends, People do watch on how we live our lives, not so much on what we say, because a lot of us can talk good, but it's how we live our lives. And it's the same with fitness. It's like, you know, you could have the products in the, 
in your house, but if you're not taking them, you could have a great piece of machinery, <laughs> you know, that's that's used as an expensive clothes hanger if you're not getting on it and putting some sweat into it. You know, so what I say to each and every one of us, you know, before we leave is live it. Truly get out of your comfort zone. That's where all the growth is. All the growth is in the valley, not on the mountaintops. And we have every opportunity that God wants to fellowship with us. He, he truly is, is adjusting our moral compass so that we can possibly be relocated to a place that we were always supposed to be. Maybe to undo some of the things and the stuff that we thought that was important. Now is the time more than ever to evaluate how do you want to spend the rest of your life? Who do you want to spend it with? What do you want to be doing? And what do you want to be remembered for? I mean, bingo. We got nothing but time to evaluate that. So I totally agree with you. And on a final note, Adriel, I've watched you the first time you were on stage and you, you, I won't even get into you. You almost I tripped was like <laughs> freaking out. I was like, I'm gonna forget everything I'm supposed to do. But she was, she was, she was hired as a photographer and stuff like that, and and she did a great job. But the point was, I've watched this woman, this soul, evolve. I've watched the Holy Spirit fill her up. I've watched her grow, and I'm so darn proud of you. Um, and we are blessed to have you. You have enriched my life in, in knowing you for almost this decade. And I'll say it in front of our CEO. I would be kind of lost if you weren't helping me as much as you did, because I'm like uh, Ishka Bibble on, uh, on computers. <laughs> <laughs> Ishka Bibble? <laughs> We know, we know who where the real engine is for me. <laughs> New word. Hey, I, I invent words. I'm from Brooklyn. What can I tell you? <laughs> I will help you with your Ishka Bibble anytime. Okay, thank you. Well, we love you guys. Yeah. Um, Susie J, thank you guys so much for being here and there's a lot that you guys aren't seeing them do on the on the back end of Zervita and just know that they are working their their ishka boodles. <laughs> 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 and they're really dedicated to you guys and to us as the corporate staff and they're doing so much um, that I'm just very grateful. I mean, I haven't had to miss a paycheck. I have a lot of friends out of work. So just super blessed, super honored to be a part of a company that is flourishing despite the chaos. And I think that's something that we can really use to teach people about our industry, about our products and about our culture, for sure. Yeah. Well, well have an amazing Resurrection Sunday yeah. um, and a good Friday. Pretty excited. We had to remind everyone on calls today that we are not working tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me just say, um, we do have much to be thankful for. I, I just pray that we all during this weekend think, take a little, little bit of time and moments and thank God for where we are, what, what this weekend represents, and, and this is why we all are here, frankly. And I don't mean to make this a, a spiritual thing, but that's what it is. You know, you can't, <laughs> you got to call it what it is. Uh, God has his hand on the company. We just want to do exactly what he wants us to do and thank for it. To all of you, because I recognize a lot of the names. A lot of you have been here forever. Some of you are new. Thank you guys so much for all that you do. Uh, Adriel, I pray for you all the time, probably most out of anybody in the company, because Adriel is a hugger. She's known as the hugger in the company, and she's in isolation. So I'm expecting any minute for her to just blow up. But uh, she's been very, yeah. <laughs> So I think the secret is, is if we can figure out a way to get actual hugs to Zoom, we'll all be managed. <laughs> My dog is like, could you- will be a billion dollar company. <laughs> Overnight. Overnight. <laughs> Thank you all. God bless yeah. you all. Thank you. Have a great one. Bye. 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 We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>